November, San Diego voters living in District 4 will choose who will represent them next on the City Council. So there are three candidates running. They include Tylisa Sussberry, the Executive Assistant for uh, State Senate District 39, Henry Foster III, who serves as Chief of Staff for County Supervisor Monica Montgomery Stepp, and Chida Warren Darby, the Boards and Commissions Director for Mayor Todd Gloria. And Chida joins us here in studio to talk more about her campaign, what she hopes to accomplish for her district if elected. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's just introduce yourself a little bit to, to the voters and to San Diegans who might not know you and your work and tell us what you've done and why you think you're the right person for this job. Yeah, well, my name is Chida Warren Darby. I am a person that was raised in District 4. I'm a second generation black newspaper publisher. My family owns the Voice and Viewpoint newspaper, which is housed in District 4. So I've spent most of my life there doing the family business. Went to Oak Park Elementary, went to the School of Creative and Performing Arts, which really fed into a lot of who I am today and um, had nonprofits within the district, I uh, serve on boards and, and different things that service District 4. And so I've always been a servant of the community. I, and now I work at City Hall and this has given me an opportunity to serve in a different way. Let me ask you, you know, last month we saw, and actually even this, this month, we saw a lot of the communities getting flooded. District 4 communities really got impacted. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you say about the city's response? I'm actually, I was shocked. I was shocked. I was a uh, front line and I was disappointed. I was shocked. I have a lot of questions about how we could have better prepared residents. And um, that has become a large part of my platform, my storm recovery plan for residents of District 4. We need to make sure that communities like D4 are better prepared in case of an emergency, that they have access to resources, that they're not restricted to just the internet or social media, and be mindful of our demographic. And so that's something I'm still working through myself. Um, it's considering we're in a, a city that is earthquake prone. We have a, you know, we're prone to disaster here. So something was going to happen sooner or later, but this has been very shocking. Obviously, a lot of people, you know, felt very strongly and yeah. we saw some pretty, you know, awful images that uh, things that happened to people in those areas. Uh, is there someone, something to blame? And, and what would you do different or what would you have done differently? Yeah, so we have learned that a lot of those uh, homes were in flood prone areas. And one thing that really was top of mind for me was uh, looking to see how we could better prepare residents to inform them of the type of space that they live in. I think if we had today's zoning back then when mm. those homes were built, we would have known not to place them there. And so we have to do better. We have to give our residents the opportunity to prepare themselves. Um, I'm looking to propose something in terms of policy that I'm proposing, some type of equity layer on, on our mapping so people can see whether they live near a fault line or whether they live near flooding areas and to make sure they're better prepared with insurance and just being prepared for an emergency. So I have a lot of ideas in terms of how to um, educate our constituents and how City Hall can do better at preparing folks for these natural disasters. Let's talk about your take on affordable housing mm -hmm. and also homelessness in the city of San Diego. It's really such a major issue. Yeah. Yeah. We are behind in our housing build. That's not a secret. And I think the uh, pandemic exasperated a lot of things. So we're seeing where we have a lot of folks coming to San Diego. Um, we have great weather, but the cost of living is high. Mm -hmm. So as a result of the pandemic, people have lost their homes. They're on the streets. We're getting people from other locales. And we are, I feel like we're doing what we can right now. Everything didn't happen overnight, but it feels like it did. And so I believe we have some policies in place that will help um, move ahead that affordable housing that we need to build. We have a long ways to go in mm -hmm. terms of catching up. Um, we have some things in place to get our homelessness, our homeless situation under wraps and people transition off the streets. But we just have to see, you know, it's going to take one day at a time. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that issue a little further, if you don't mind, because I mean, you grew up here, as you mm -hmm. said, and you've seen communities develop. Yeah. Um, what do you think the city's doing right when it comes to homelessness? I know there's been a lot of efforts on mm -hmm. Mayor Gloria's part uh, to, to try to, to fix the problem. Yeah. Same with Governor Newsom, same with President Biden. You can go all the way down yeah. the line, this yeah. major issue. Uh, what, what do you think is being done right? What do you think can be done better? I think we're addressing, as a city an organization, we're addressing the issue head on, uh, seeking funding that's really going to help uh, fund the resources that are needed to get folks off the street, being creative with our thinking. There's been a lot of unorthodox approaches in terms of how to uh, maybe share the, the burden of homelessness throughout the city. Is there so, anything you've seen that you said, you know, that's it, that's a good idea, that's something that's different? It's not necessarily one thing because one thing is connected to another, connected to another. So it's really difficult for me to isolate it. But what I do like is that we're getting residents more involved in the process and that we're spreading our solutions out throughout the city. So we're not concentrating efforts in one part of town. So I really do appreciate that. What would you do with law enforcement? How would you better the relationship with San Diego and certain people in your district specifically? Yeah, I think that's an important question. For me, coming up, we knew our officers. Uh, a lot of times we would go from SCPA to Lincoln and the officers knew who we were. 
um, they knew us by name and now I don't really see that being the case. And so one thing I really like to consider is proposing some type of pipeline program from our high schools um, into the police force so that we can retain students that look more like the communities that they're from. Uh, we need to increase our partnership with police, with public safety. We need to make sure that they have the support that they need so that they, when they do answer these calls, they have the right people on staff, whether it's a person that specializes in mental health or of that nature, where we can make our PD more of, a, more of an inclusive space that meets the needs of everyone. You have gotten some uh, endorsements that I'm sure make mm -hmm. you uh, proud, one being Mayor Gloria, who you mm -hmm. work for, and also yeah. Congressman Juan Vargas. Can you talk us a little bit about what those endorsements maybe mean for you in your campaign and also what your experience working for the mayor uh, does for you as far as being prepared for a job like uh, being on the city council? Yeah, endorsements are good. I think they mean different things to different people, but for me, endorsements don't vote, people vote. So it's nice to know I have the backing and the support of individuals in these spaces that, you know, understand what I'm wanting to do and what I propose. Uh, so that's been really helpful, and I'm glad to have that support. Um, working in the administration has really been eye-opening for me. I kind of get to see everything from the top down, and I have a better understanding of how we function as a city and how much work we need to do. So that's been a fascinating experience, um, and seeing where we can kind of fill the cracks. Uh, we have a long way to go. Um, we have a big workforce there, and I think we're doing what we can right now within the administration as an employee of the, of the administration. I think we're doing what we can to try to turn turn the wheel a little bit, but we have a long way to go. All right. Well, we have three weeks to go until uh, the primary Just a day. Few weeks. And Are you counting? We, well, I can see it. Stays Tuesday, right? <laughs> yes. Three weeks to go. For us, yes, we're counting. <laughs> yes, the big year. Kata, thank you so <laughs> much. Appreciate you, you uh, being here. Chad Warren Darby, and we wish you the best. Thank you. Uh, in a few weeks and uh, in November. Thank